Hi YouTube. Um, got a few different things to talk about in terms of lifting pots off the wheel. Um, I'm going to go with the two ways that I do it most often. And then we'll talk about some other ways that I don't think are as successful. And I'll, I'll try to give reasons why. Now if it's the only way you've done it, then you're probably really good at doing it that way. And you know all the pitfalls and everything. But this is for beginners and you know, just try to explain the, uh, the why why not and the why to do something. Um, again, if this is the way you've been doing it for 30 years, I'm not trying to trying to make you feel bad. It's, this is just so beginners don't don't have issues in the beginning and they get to take their pots off the wheel. So first one I'll do is just a little vase, and I'm doing them little because well, I kind of running out of clay for demo stuff. So we got, a little, we got our little, our first little vase that we've ever made and now we need to pick it up. So first thing is just cut the skirt off. This would give you an area underneath here where you're actually able to get your fingers if it was say a bowl and if not a bowl, a cylindrical object, it will give you a place to kind of squeeze with your pinkies and that will help keep your piece around. Next thing is to scrape all the slip off the outside of your piece with your flexible metal ribbon death. If there's any slip on the outside of your piece, it'll make it very difficult to lift up. It'll want to slide, and when it slides in your hands, you'll react by squeezing harder. When you squeeze it harder, you'll change the shape of your piece, and when you change the shape of your piece, you make it a lot more difficult to trim later on. So we'll get the water out of the bottom, and then we'll scrape the hands off. So scooch over to Mr. Bucket here. I have a bucket with a sharp edge and I put the palm of my hand through and I run down. You can see how it scraped my hand completely clean. Do that with my other one. I'll do my thumbs. I never really use my thumbs. It's just habit now. And then back to the pot. I'm going to, there's two different ways. One way would be to get from underneath. The second way would be to use your hands. We'll do, go from underneath first. Well, for that, you're going to cut it off. So I'm pressing down against the wheel head. I don't do it while it's spinning because I don't want it to slide off. If you're using a wiggle wire or something like that, something completely different, this is just beginner stuff. Pressing down against the wheel head, I'm going to pull towards me. Oh, I just get my hands. I don't need to do it again, but I, it's OCD, I guess. I'm going to go around the bottom. I'm going to wrap my pinkies around. You can see my pinkies kind of get around there. Let the rest of my hand touch it and lift up. Now, this, you know, because it's so small, it'll lift up pretty cleanly. Now, the other way, as if you had a bowl shape, would be to take four fingers and imagine them around the piece like a square. And then as I move them in, I close them too, so that that square shrinks together, like a chuck on a drill. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to touch it, I'm going to squeeze it, I'm going to give it a little twist, and lift up. And then put that down. All right, so go in four fingers, twist, lift up. Now, other ways people people remove pots from the wheel. Um, one when I you know was was beginning drawing was to wet the front of the wheel here, get a lot of water, run the wire tool under a few times until it made it slippery underneath, and then you would remove your splash pan. get a board and hopefully the board was the same height as your bat you put a little water on your bat and you would slide it onto the new board well the problem I found with this is that you get a lot of extra water underneath your piece and that water can cause cracking also when you slide if it sticks a little bit or becomes um, caught somewhere you're gonna turn the bottom into an oval a lot, a lot more than I have um, when I pick them up in other ways. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a lot more work than just picking it up. Because now I gotta put my wheel all back together.
Not that that's a huge deal, but you know, it's another step if you're you know trying to make a lot of stuff in practice. The other way is if you have your own bats and and everything, and you made a piece that's too big to lift up, just take the bat off. Um, you don't want to keep it on the bat for you know weeks at a time, but it can stay on for a day or 12 hours until it stiffens up enough that you're able to lift it up. The uh, the last way that I see people um, kind of, I don't want to say, they, they don't pick it up this way, but it's one of the things they do to help them pick it up is put a piece of paper on the top. I think when you put a piece of paper on the top, it, they say they do it so that when you lift it up, it doesn't change the shape of the top, that it stays round. But for me, I think I would mess it up just as much by putting a piece of paper on the top before I lift it up. So I, I guess I'm just, you know, just like I say, you know, everybody that's been doing it for 10 years in one way have, you know, probably learned how to do it very well. But for a beginner, for, you know, for my beginners, it's easiest to do it with the least amount of fuss as possible, either picking it up at the bottom with your hands or four fingers. Um, and that's the way I show it. Now if you find that you're getting, getting issues like it becoming a taco when you put it down, don't go right away and fix it. It's really soft and the more you manipulate it now, the worse it's going to get. But if it is a taco, the best thing to do is apply pressure in the opposite position that you were. Don't try to fix the top, try to fix what's causing the top to go oval and kind of push back at the bottom and bring it back into a circle. So those are, those are some removal, some of the pitfalls with the removal, and um, oh, we didn't talk about pot lifters. Okay, so we'll talk about pot lifters real quick. Pot lifters are these metal, metal apparatus that you cut the piece, and then you take this metal sheet, like two pieces of sheet metal, and you go underneath, and they don't go all the way through, they go like just around the middle. You squeeze them together, and then they lift up from the bottom. And I think it, it cuts up the whole bottom. It makes a big mess underneath. At least I found it makes a big mess underneath, which would then make it harder to trim. So I do things to make it as easy as possible for somebody that's learning how to throw to do it successfully. And I try to remove any steps or any products or any you know, techniques that are going to make it harder. So those, that's my two cents. Um, what, what's... Oh, next, next video will be um, throwing practice. So things, one of the things you can do to practice throwing so that you can get better um, as an exercise. So you're not trying to keep pieces, you're just trying to practice your, your technique. Again, we're trying to test the links here. So the link at the top there is the first day of class. And then I'm going to make a series of help videos put together. And then we'll see if we can get a website link.